Yes, please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Jim Fury, who continues to serve as the National Commander of the Navy CB Veterans of America. Kualala 
if they would help us place the wreath to represent that it's more, today is more than just veterans, it's about their families also. So um, thank you very much for coming and I'm just really glad we have good weather. Thank you, Captain Donovan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our guest speaker, who currently serves as the Commander of Naval Facility Engineering Command Atlantic, Rear Admiral Dean Randall. First of all, I'd like to send the regards of Admiral John Corka, the Chief of Civil Engineers and Commander of the Outback Headquarters. He would have loved to have been here today. He's uh, out traveling to the Pacific uh, over the next week or so to take care of our CDs out there, but he would have loved to have been here and uh, send his regards. Uh, thank you to everyone here. Thank you for coming to honor the men and women who have served and continue to serve our nation. I'd like to send my personal welcome to our veterans in attendance. Thank you to each and every one of you for your contributions to our great nation. On the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the fighting in World War II and World War I came to an end. That war was supposed to be the war to end all wars, and November 11th was Armistice Day. It became a universally recognized celebration. The very first Armistice Day was proclaimed 100 years ago today by President Woodrow Wilson in honor of the grievous sacrifices made by our World War I veterans. President Wilson's intent for Armistice Day was, in his words, to be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude, gratitude for the victory. In 1954, after World War II and the Korean War, the day was renamed Veterans Day to honor all those who have served and defended our nation. I feel very privileged this day to stand with you in honor of Veterans Day at the CD Memorial. The memorial behind us is sculpted by Mr. Felix Llewellyn, a World War II CD veteran. He was also the sculptor who sculpted the famous Marine Memorial of the flag racing in Iwo Jima. I think it's very fitting to note that the two icons of the CBs and the Marines were, were crafted by a veteran. For those veterans with us today and active in our lives, I thank you for your continued service to our nation. So as we gather here today, it's important to remember that we are only a few steps from the hollow grounds of Arlington National Cemetery. These 624 acres of sacred soil, the final resting place of our nation's veterans, our heroes, are a reminder that freedom now and never has been free. Each day, 30 or more veterans are laid to rest here among these hollowed halls. Our CB and Civil Engineer Corps veterans are laid to rest here too. Admiral Ben Morrell rests nearby. We all remember him as the King Bee and the father of the CBs. We remember his steadfast leadership during World War II, but his service did not end upon his retirement in 1954. Upon retirement, Admiral Morrell became president of Turner Construction Company, who we still partner with today. He served as chairman of the National Task Force on Water Resources during the 50s. He was instrumental in organizing the Americans for Constitutional Action, a nonpartisan good government part political action committee. He retired to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he was active in a variety of local causes until his death in 1978. Ben Morrell was a famous Navy Admiral True, but he was also a leader in business, government, and charity. In that way, Admiral Morrell reminds me of all our veterans. They continue to serve. Other veteran stories end abruptly with the ultimate sacrifice on the field of battle or elsewhere in the nation's service. <clears throat> Construction mechanic third class Marvin Shields, steel, world, steel worker second class Robert Steetham, posthumously advanced to Master Chief, Builder Chief Joel Baldwin, Lieutenant Junior Grade Francis Toner, and many more have given their all. Many of us have a name or two on our minds of a veteran who has paid the ultimate sacrifice for service to our nation. Pause with me for a moment of silence to remember them.
Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude my remarks today, our tribute would not be complete without recognizing the families of our veterans who have sacrificed so much for our nation. Mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, wives and husbands, daughters and sons, close friends and loved ones. Theirs has never been an easy burden. <clears throat> Finally, let me say once again thank you to our veterans. Today we honor your commitment and service and sacrifice. Thank you. And I'm going to go off script in just a second here as well to talk to all the young CVs that are out there, your veterans too. And, you know, as, as we're facing a even more complex security environment than we've seen in a long time. Um, our military advantage is being challenged today in a way that it hasn't since the end of the Cold War. And in the briefings that I go to, more and more of the conversation about the next conflict is not if, but when. Uh, very likely in the Pacific. Uh, it might happen after I'm retired. Um, some of you wearing more stripes might be retired, but for a lot of you some young CVs, um, I know you're gonna be there to answer the call just like the, uh, the veterans that we're honoring today answered the call of days past. And I commit to you and on behalf of all the veterans here that we'll be here to support you when you answer the call. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Will the official party and wreath presenters please post for the reflame? guests, please stand. Bugler, sound tunes. the official party please return to their seats and remain standing. That's right. 
you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord bless your going out and your coming in. And in all things, keep you close and safe in his care. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's Riesling Ceremony. On behalf of the CD community, thank you for attending and have a wonderful day today.